Now we're gonna start getting into the makeup side of things. Hey Huns. Guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is a today is a very packed video. I hope you Huns are okay. If you're new here, welcome. And to the guys that have already subscribed, thank you so much. All the kisses you guys it's been an eventful few days but today's video is really special it's a little bit long though um so i've done a brow tutorial for you guys and i've done a makeup tutorial this is the complete look that you guys are going to be seeing but um yeah i hope you like it this is my version of soft glam <laughs> so yeah and i haven't worn short hair in such a long time guys what do you think do you like it? So anyway, um, yeah, I hope you guys really enjoy it. Do a voiceover for the makeup just because I found it easier to record that way to just do everything. And then I will talk over so that I can explain exactly what I'm doing. Because if I have to talk and do, I don't think that I get through the video. And I gesture a lot, as you can see. So <laughs> doing that with brushes in my hands was going to end up just being such a nightmare. Okay, so let's get into this video. Honeys. Okay, let's get into these brows, y'all. So, as you can see, sis has mighty thin brows, but we'll do what we can. So, I had permanent makeup done about 10 years ago. Worst mistake of my life. As you can see, the one is higher than the other, and now I have to try and make them look like at least first cousins. So, welcome to my life. All right, then. So, this is what I use for my brows. I use the got to be gel to keep the hairs in place. I use the setting brush from Real Techniques concealers, angled eyebrow brush, spoolie and concealer brush, and my brown pencil from Essence in the color Hot Chocolate. Okay, so we're gonna start by um, combing out the hairs with a spoolie, okay? Just creating the shape so we know where to place our pencil. Then I'm gonna take my Essence pencil, in the color hot chocolate and i'm going to start creating a line at the bottom of my brow so now i'm creating the shape so you know there's a there's a there's an ideal shape for your face but then there's also preference so um there's many things to consider um when shaping your brows but you want to stay as true to your natural shape as possible as you can see i'm literally creating a shape around my hair some some brows are higher than others okay but i use light very light strokes to fill in the brow i'm not being heavy-handed at all as you can see and yet the brow is still looking quite dark so this pencil is very pigmented okay and then i just brush out with my spoolie it's easier if you create the shape as close to your natural one as possible so that it's easier once you start going in with your concealer okay so we want to create that fade from light to dark just as our brows um, grow naturally you want to create that same um, type of shape or rather coloring with your pencil so you don't want to go too dark at the beginning um, and then end up with that very harsh squarish like shape at the beginning so we want to keep it as natural looking as possible okay and then now i'm going to go in with my concealer and i'm using the p louise uh, rumor 4 base um, to conceal under the brows to start with and i start about a centimeter from where my brow starts and i just use short jerky movements to create um, that contour or rather to create that clean line under the brow so take your time with this everybody does it differently i prefer slow deliberate movements as opposed to trying to do one perfect movement it, it it really doesn't work for me but to each his own and then i connect the concealer from the beginning connected to the rest of the brow so if you look i then pull the concealer down so that when i buff out i don't um, tamper with that clean line that i've created under the brow Okay, so you want to pull that concealer down just a little bit. So I normally go in with a lighter concealer underneath. Um, and then I also like to pinch my brush 
so that it's very, very thin, super thin, so that I can really, really get a, a clean line with my concealer. So now I'm just going on top. So this is cool tan mixed with a little bit of the Rumor 4 base um, from P. Louise. So I started out kind of like trying to hover at the top so that you guys could see the could see the brow and then I just realized that nah my arm is just not made for that so I had to bring my arm across my body so that I could actually see my brow and and finish up my tapered end. So again, very slow, deliberate movements. And you can see I'm using the very tip of that brush. So I prefer a concealer brush that's very small because then it means I can control the product and a little bit rounded at the top so that I can create all my curves um, for the brow. And then once you have the desired shape, again, you buff that concealer out so that when you go in with your, um, your brush that you that you um, blend out the concealer with you're not going too close to the lines that you've now created which means you're going to end up with um, a, a, a smudged line so i use my real techniques brush setting brush to buff out the concealer so that is my left brow done so that is essentially my eyebrow shape then I go in with my spoolie. This is where the got to be comes in. And you want to brush that gel through the hairs. Now, the got to be really keeps the hairs in place the whole day. You, there is a um, an eyebrow gel that you can buy, but I find it just doesn't do the same thing. Okay, so now we're going to go into eyeshadow. This is the e.l.f. Rose Gold Palette. And we're starting with the dark brown in that palette. And we're just going to pack, pack, pack that um, eyeshadow into the corner crease of your eye. And I'm using a tapered brush with um, some very soft fibers. Well, they may be a more medium texture. And I'm just using that brush to really get into that crease of my eye, which is where I'm placing my first color. Again, using very jerky movements. Now I'm going in with a fluffier brush. This is a wet and wild um, blending brush. You can see it's quite wide, but I love the effect it gives on the eyeshadow because it gives a very fluffy um, finish owing to the actual texture of the brush. So every brush gives a different finish. And if you want that fluffy buffed out finish, you need a very fluffy soft fiber brush. So I'm going back in with my first um, brush that tapered uh, MAC brush and I'm just going back to re-emphasize that first brown that we laid down and now we are going to cut our crease so naturally you can actually see where my crease is and I'm going to create a new crease for myself um, using my rumor 2 base I'm going I'm literally following the contours of my eye the same shape so we want to create a soft rounded shape above the eye and i really use the tip of that brush you can see i pinched it again to make sure that the top of it is super super thin um, you, you're not going to be able to cut your crease with a with a thick brush it has to be thin otherwise you're not going to get that clean clean line so i am just using again very slow deliberate strokes to create that rounded shape above my eye so i am cutting my crease through the brown but as you can see most of it has ended up underneath the concealer so there's only a very small amount of that dark brown showing above and then the buffed out um, orange color above it and then we're going to spread that concealer all the way down and evenly over the eyelid so i like to pack on my concealer and then I just, um, I, I, I pat, pat, pat until the concealer is somewhat tacky. So it mustn't be wet, wet when you now start applying your eyeshadows. It must be slightly tacky. So I'm going back into that first color that we used, that first brown, and I'm going to buff it into the concealer. You can see here, we're working it into, so if you divide your eye into, let's say three parts, that first brown, is going to take up maybe the first third of the eye. 
and now we're going to apply our eyelid color so this is like a burnt orange type of look it's a beautiful color love 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 it's such a pigmented palette i was pleasantly surprised um i i i i affirmatively shopped that palette from my aunt <laughs> and then we're going to go in with a lighter gold in the inner corner of the eye now if you notice i still have that the the emphasis of that line what i what you do is you want to pat the eyeshadow down you don't want to use swiping movements if you want um a good transfer of pigment you really want to pack eyeshadow on so you layer it if you wipe then if you do swiping movements then you're basically wiping that eyeshadow off which if you want the pigment to really come through you want to use packing sort of movements okay so next we're going to apply our liquid liner just a very very thin line it's not going to be a wing or anything like that applied as close to the eyelashes as possible so this really is also just to um it really helps if you are not that great with applying your lashes initially because it creates um the black base so that even when you apply your lashes it's not immediately noticeable if your lashes are not sitting right on your lash line okay and then now i'm just going to place my lash so when I apply my eyelash glue, I like to um, apply it and then maybe wait about 30 seconds. You want your glue to be tacky when you apply it so that it's not moving around on the eye because a lot of people want to just place it and yet it's not dry enough. If it's a little bit tacky, you can place it and then it will stay on the eye, so which makes it easier to place the eyelash versus when it's still wet, it tends to shift around quite a bit so this probably needs patience and then i just use my tweezers to pinch my eyelash my natural lash to the falsy that i've just applied to make sure we have a seamless application <laughs> okay so i've done both eyes now off camera and next i've already applied my um my primer and i used my revlon age defying blur and my age defying youth fix primer okay and then i am going in with my revlon candid foundation guys i love this foundation i mix the color 440 with the color 530 and i i get the perfect color for my skin um 530 has a beautiful brown undertone which i love 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 and the 440 has just enough brightness to really bring out my complexion and just the feel of it on my skin like it's creamy but it sets just right because i'm not a big fan of overly matte foundations because i have very dehydrated skin and i'm using my juvia's place flat complexion brush to apply my foundation all over the face and as you can see you really want to get that foundation to kind of go into like your hairline there's nothing worse than foundation that is just hanging around and <laughs> not really sitting where it's supposed to go so i really like to buff out my concealer as you can see i use again very short jerky movements i don't do very long strokes with my brushes okay i do short jerky movements to and i pack my eyeshadow my my foundation also excuse me okay so next is our concealer i am using la girl la girl pro concealer in cool tan i didn't want too bright of an under eye for this one since it's just a beginner friendly eyeshadow look so i'm just using one color concealer today and I've applied that under my eyes, the bridge of my nose, my forehead, and a little bit on my chin. So I'm, I use my Real Techniques setting brush to buff out that concealer. As you can see, again, short jerky movements. And I'm, I'm packing. I'm not swiping. I am packing using short jerky movements. So you're like buffing and like short swipes at the same time i really hope that this makes sense but if you look at the brush you'll get an idea of the type of strokes that you need to do so i tend to go over an area like quite a lot until i am happy with 
um, the way that it has blended out. So I like to take my concealer all the way out and then curve it around my brow to create a small highlight around um, my face. But don't worry too much about that because I'm still going to go in and contour so it, it will blend. I prefer to do my highlighting first and then I contour afterwards. So I, I go over it quite a bit, you guys, as you can see. And I go right up close to the eye, close to the waterline there. Um, you don't want to miss any spots. So take your time. Again, short, jerky movements, as you can see. Whew, child. This makeup thing is a long, long story. Hm. I'm telling you just for the gram <laughs> okay so again using that same brush but as you can see i've slightly tilted it because now i'm working on a smaller area which is the bridge of my nose and i just use that to buff all the way down my nose and this brush just works really well because it's got a tapered finish it really gets into like the corner of the eye and things like that. So I go back in with my foundation brush and I like to just go over the lines because there's nothing worse than harsh lines um, with your contour. So I then go back in with that brush to just buff out those lines so it doesn't look so harsh. And also just to bring in a little bit of the foundation that's on the brush to bring down the color because I don't want too bright of um too bright of a of a highlight i don't want it to I'm, I'm going for a very um light kind of look today okay so i alternate i go back and forth between my setting brush and my foundation brush until i'm happy with um the way that um the whole thing has blended out so i go i go back and forth until i'm good Okay, so next I'm going in with my Ben Nye Banana Powder and I'm just going to set underneath the eye. Now, y'all, I don't ordinarily bake because my under eye area is so dehydrated, but I've been using these really, really great um, under eye um, mask, like under eye patches from Elizabeth from my korean skincare range and yes my next video will be my skincare routine so i will be taking you guys thoroughly through what i do for my skin like and talk, talk to you guys about my skincare routine and what stuff i use at home and stuff that i buy because you can use stuff at home as well so i apply that powder over the areas that i highlighted because we want to bring out that highlight so remember when we highlight and contour when we highlight it's what we want to draw attention to and when we contour it's how we create the the shadows on our face that would occur naturally if the sun were to hit us directly so the usual contours are obviously the hollows of the cheeks the bridge of the nose and um, the sides of the nose the bridge of the nose yes and the forehead because wow sis has got a big forehead so today i didn't do a cream contour i'm going straight in with a powder contour so i'm using my ruby kisses um mineral powder in the color honey brown which i love it's a beautiful shade of brown it's a warm brown which i love 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 on my skin and i'm just using a very soft um brush to blend that in you remember i told you the softer the brush the fluffier a finish you'll get so i really really love to use this brush for my contour it's not a conventional brush but it works so well for me um in terms of giving me the effect that i want from a powder contour so i'm still perfecting my contour guys uh, for the longest time i really wasn't a fan but i can see what it does for my makeup so i'm i'm learning i'm learning guys so i use my juvia's place uh powder brush as you can see to now buff out my powder but as you can see it's made my under eye actually all my highlights super super bright so i'm actually going to bring down the color just now and also this recording at night y'all like it's not working for me like i'm such a natural light girl i love working with natural light it's what i'm used to it's what i know and this filming at night is not the business 
Okay, so now I'm going in with my Maybelline, Maybelline, woo, the English, with my Maybelline Fit Me Powder in the color 350 or caramel. And I'm just using that to bring the color back to my face. Because, you know, you'll set your face with a uh, translucent powder and sometimes it can come across a little ashy. So I always go, go in with um, my, my face powder to then bring the color back into my skin. And this particular powder has a slight orange undertone, which I really like against my skin. It works really, really well for me. Um, so I place that on my whole face, but not so much under the eyes. I mean, I definitely bring it up to my cheekbones just to create, just to soften the... Um, the transition from the bright under eye color to my foundation color so you'll see i go a little bit on my cheekbone where the highlight meets my foundation to buff out that line and make sure it's all neat and then i went back in with um back to my original brown color and i'm just um using that under my eyes in lieu of um eyeliner i'm not a big fan of eyeliner my eyes water a lot. I mean, I wear glasses, so I already aggravate my eyes with a whole lot of eyeshadow. So I, I, I don't really like to wear eyeliner because it almost always ends up under my cheeks <laughs> or rather under my eyes. I just, I don't like it. So I normally will go in with an eyeshadow that is tied into whatever I've done on my eyelid. Um, so I'm going back in with my Ruby Kisses um, mineral powder in Honey Brown to do my contour. So I've opted for a powder contour today um, just because I didn't want anything too exaggerated or too harsh. I wanted it to look soft and natural and pretty. And I just go around my very generous forehead <laughs> and into my cheekbones to create some shape to my face so that my face doesn't look so flat from the front and from the sides. And I just take that along my jawline, just very lightly. I didn't want anything too heavy. And then this is my Juvia's Place Loose Pigment Highlighter in the color Nefertiti. I love this highlighter, guys. Oh my goodness. I love it. It's lush. It's, it's pretty, but it's not in your face. It's just, it's gorgeous. I love it. I mean, I love a highlight, but I don't like it to be too strong and... This one is great. I, I love to use it also to just um, highlight my inner corners. Like if I want to create a more doe-eyed type of finish, I like to put it on my inner corners, which I did for this look, but I don't think I did it on camera. And then I just take my finger and I do tip of the nose, bridge of the nose for highlight. So that, you know, when you turn your face, the light catches it just so. So I don't do the whole bridge. I just do tip and bridge. And then this is my Juvia's Place Saharan Volume 2 blush palette, I believe. And I'm going in with that brownie um, color, which I love. It gives a very bronzed finish, but it does have a slight, ever so slight um, pinkish tone to it, which um, gives me a nice blush finish but um, not, overly, not overly pink, so it's more bronze than anything else. I love that color. And now we are finally at the leaps. So I use my Essence Pencil to just create a contour, um, or rather that darkness around the lip to kind of help the little bit of um, color that I have on my lips. So I just do a line all around the lips, just a very thin line. I mean, it's really up to you in terms of the intensity of color that you want, but I do a very thin line and then I kind of just smudge it out with my mouth. There's no real technique for me here. I wasn't going for anything neat. And then this color, this is my Hues and Tones matte lip color in the, in the color Vixen. So I use that over the brown that I've created. And then just for the purposes of creating some type of lip contour. So I like to make my lips appear 
pouty, if I may put it that way, pouty and small. So they look a little bit pursed. So I then go in with a lighter color in the middle of my lips to create that ombre finish, which it worked for this look. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely a nude girl for most, for, for the most part, I wear nude lippies, but you know, I thought I'd play with a little bit of color today. So yeah, wow, my eyes are so red, guys. Anyway, so yeah, we've come to the end of our look, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And the girl is done. Hmm. Not bad, guys. Not bad. I should have actually showed you guys how I curled this pixie wig. I have not um, had short hair in a hot minute. It's been a couple of years since I've worn a short uh, look like this. This is a wig that I bought. It was straight and then I decided to just curl the one side and see how it would look. I wasn't actually feeling this wig when I first got it and like now I'm just like, okay, it's not bad. Okay. And this is our look today, guys. I hope you like it. I'm sorry my eyes are so red. I had, yo, I had a terrible headache earlier, so my eyes are still red. I think I was just so over every, everything about this day that, like, I really didn't care anymore. <laughs> oh, guys. Filming is a mission. Kids, na na na. Like, there's just a lot going I've on. I've had the most triggering week. <laughs> you know, you know, you know those kind of weeks where the devil really tries to break you down. And that's, that's, that's when you really know, like, oh, okay, I must be on to something. Guys, I am being tried and tested. I can't even get into it. I think I might have to do a story time because my life is just such a joke at the moment. It's unbelievable. You know, people really, really can take you, like, take you for a clown. I mean, I wear makeup, but I'm no clown, you know? But anyways, thank you so much, guys, for um, watching to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. And um, this look was just to kick us off on the actual, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, on the actual makeup side of things. Um, since we've now uploaded um, our first two videos, which is, you know, to introduce myself, um, who I am and what this channel is going to be so about. So now we're going to start getting into the makeup side of things. So please feel free to comment down below what look you would like to see next um, or what looks would be more helpful to you guys in terms of um, technique or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. Like you guys will just let me know. Um, yeah, what you'd like to see. So, guys, thank you so much um, for... Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, Hans, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.